<laughs> Welcome, Lumineers and fans of the happiest card game on Earth. My name's John C. You've just been putting the inkwell alongside all these juicy details about the Lorcana Challenge. That is the official OP, the official organized play circuit of Disney Lorcana. All of this was revealed as part of this week's Lorecast. We've already covered all of the cards that were shown off for set four, and we'll have another video coming up showing the new product lines, but this one's just about the organized play. First of all, we're going to show you where and when you can play, then we're going to show you what you can win for playing in these events, and finally, how you're going to win them, the sort of format that they're looking at. So first things first, it's worth pointing out that these events are in no way tied to the set championships. That's the one that the stores are going to be running in the next month or two uh, for the Rockstar Stitch promos and playmats. Those are a completely separate event that are handled by LGS uh, near you, hopefully. We're going to be finding out information on that very soon. But what was announced today is basically the first step in a road to a Worlds event in 2025. There are going to be 10 regional events. Only a handful of them have been announced now. There are going to be six in North America, four in Europe. The first two North American ones are going to be Atlanta, Georgia on the weekend of May 25th and Chicago, Illinois on June 8th. Four more dates still to be announced. And the first two in Europe are going to be Lille in France on the weekend of May 25th and Bochum in Germany on the weekend of July 6th with two more dates to be announced for Europe. Tickets aren't currently available for these. That will be coming in the next couple of weeks along with the rest of the dates. But they have said that these dates are the first ones in their respective areas. So all of the other four in North America, for instance, will be happening after June 8th. Very much hoping to see one of those four will happen in Canada, uh, ideally Ontario, uh, but Chicago isn't too far for me. I may be able to get over to that one. And as far as Europe goes, I imagine one of the uh, other ones yet to be announced will be in the UK, perhaps Birmingham or Liverpool, and the last one most likely will be in Scandinavia. But we'll find out soon enough. All right, so you've booked your planes, trains, and automobiles. You've headed off for the weekend. Uh, what can you win at these events? Well, just for showing up, or at least being one of the uh, sort of officially entered, entered people, uh, you're going to get yourself this beautiful dragon fire. The swirls on the art here are denoting a special sort of foil treatment. Almost looks like it's like a textured foil, although we haven't actually seen these uh, in real life yet. But it's a really beautiful card and you get that just for showing up if you're one of the 512 people to do so. They have said that that 512 number is a, a starter number and they will look at a, uh, making the events larger if they need to. A lot of people are quite worried about that number. I do personally feel like it is a little low, but I kind of understand why they've done it um, with a view to making it larger. Obviously, from a PR point of view, it's much better to be able to say, due to popular demand, we've increased capacity, as opposed to starting out with a huge capacity number and not hitting it. So far, we haven't had a third-party tournament hit 300 people, so 512 is at least a, a, a safe estimate of how many people are going to attend these events. I imagine, actually, it's going to be likely a lot more. But if you're one of the people who rocks up, you're going to get yourself one of these dragon fires. Next up, if you make it to at least top 64, you're going to get one of these let it goes. I say at least top 64 because they did say that this number may scale and there may be other ways that you can actually achieve uh, ownership of this card during the event. So I don't know whether that includes some side event prizing or, or maybe just that top 64 will increase to top 128 if... Um, if attendance increases or so on but still those two are both uh, already commissioned pieces of art so it's the same art that's on the original cards but extended the Dragonfire actually did go back to Luis Huerta for him to extend it nicely, apparently. But the next few we see are new art. So uh, the next one is for Top 32. It's a Cinderella Stout Hearted. Looks amazing. This one, along with the next one, were two of the cards that people sort of clamoured as to why there wasn't an Enchanted. Now it kind of makes sense. There's, you're going to be able to get it through this way if you're a very good player. So Top 32 of each of these tournaments will receive one of these Cinderella Stout Hearted. Top 16 of each of these tournaments will receive a Rapunzel gifted with healing. Absolutely beautiful. Top 8 won't receive an additional card, but they will receive that Rapunzel art on a mat. So it's going to be a very premium play mat. 8 of these are each event, so 80 of these in the world. Kind of insane. They've also said that it is foiled, so there's going to be a foil shiny play mat. I'll be honest with you, I've seen some Ultra Pro shiny play mats. 
cards, and I'm not a huge fan of them, but still, this is just going to be an incredibly rare piece. As well as that, each top eight from each of these events is going to be receiving an invite to the Nationals. We'll talk about that in a moment. And then finally, top four. They haven't shown this yet, but it's going to be a serialized gold foil Mickey Mouse Brave Little Taylor. Very excited to see what that looks like. They did say that sort of renders just don't do it justice, so they're working on filming it nicely so they can reveal it properly but that uh i think is most probably going to be the most expensive card i feel like that probably will overtake the d23s there's a good chance some of the other ones here will honestly just because of the rarity of them d23 cards are always going to hold a premium being the first things that came out and obviously having a very limited supply of them uh, but i do think some of these could quite easily uh value wise be worth more than that which may be a good thing because it doesn't seem like there is going to be any cash prizing at these tournaments they have said numerous times that uh, cash prizing isn't something they're looking at doing uh, but I will say that they haven't said that this is the only prizing so there may well be product support included in these events as well uh, as soon as we find out we'll let you know here so invites to nationals then they haven't yet announced what those look like but um, uh, they have said that there will be a North American nationals and a European nationals and I think they said whilst those will be invite only uh, they are going to be held at larger fan events for instance the North American nationals will have sort of 80 people at it uh, but that will be part of a larger event that other people can attend and the same for Europe it will have 40 people at it but again it will be at a larger event that people can attend and then both of those then uh, feed into a world's event uh, in uh, in early 2025 I think so you know where you're going you know what you can win how can you win them well it is going to be a relatively traditional tournament a series of Swiss rounds and then cutting to uh, a certain top number and then playing out for prizing uh, the only major difference is that during Swiss, you are only going to be playing a two-game format. So traditionally, uh, you will either play a best-of-one game, meaning you just sit down and play once, the winner moves forward, or you play a best-of-three game, where you sit down and play three games, and whoever uh, gets two out of the three uh, also continues uh, moving up the table. The big difference here then is that you're going to be only playing two games against each opponent. Each of those games will have a different uh, person going first. There will still be a dice roll at the start of the round uh, but the dice roll will decide who gets to choose whether they go first on game number one or game number two. You will get a point for each game you win and an additional point if you win both games. So if you lose both of your games you'll get zero points for the round. If you win a game and your opponent wins a game you'll both get one point for the round and if you win both of your games and your opponent doesn't win either of them uh, you will get three points for the round. This new format is an attempt to solve a few issues that they have seen happen with the game. Most notably the dice roll being perhaps a little bit too impactful on a win percentage meaning if you go first you have a higher percentage chance of winning something that pretty much happens in all games to be honest with you i mean you can only look at the uh, the percentage win of white uh, in chess to see that but it does actually seem like it's a little bit higher in Lorcana than perhaps they would like it to be and perhaps how it is compared to other TCGs so in this case you're only both taking a game each playing first and not uh, somebody having two games first compared to one game first that you would get in a best of three it's also meant to help stop intentional draws and people dropping midway through the event. Currently in a traditional Swiss format, if you lose your first round or two, there's very little reason for you to continue because you're constantly fighting an uphill battle and most likely won't place anyway. Whereas in this format, every game can matter. If somebody wins one game every round, but then somebody else loses all of their games the first two rounds, but then goes on to win uh, two games each round for the next three rounds, they'll actually be higher points-wise than the uh, the other person that won one every round. What this does mean is that the second game is going to be slightly more weighted, and that will come down to tiebreakers as well after the uh, traditional points and then strength of schedule. Overall, I personally am happy to give this a go, both as a tournament organizer and as a player. I think it's incredibly commendable of Ravensburger to both acknowledge that the, uh, the competitive scene of the game has some issues and attempt to fix them with a relatively drastic change to the norm like this and personally i feel like it's 
uh, a positive step. Although, honestly, until we start getting some data from events ran in this format, I don't think we can really make a true opinion one way or the other. But still, this is all super exciting stuff. The pricing looks incredible. I'm sure the events will be incredibly fun weekends with lots more going on than just the tournament itself. I will be trying to get to as many of these as I can, and I hope to see some of you there. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, be good. Oh,